Hi, this is Gary and in this video we're going to look at the second challenge of the 2019 Flyron challenges. This challenge was called Overlong and when you download it you just get this overlong.exe file and the description which will say the secret of this challenge is hidden cleverly, however with the right approach finding the solution will not take an overlong amount of time. So I'm reading the challenge description because there is always some kind of hint in it so we might get back to it later. First, let's run the binary. It just pops up this message box saying I never broke the encoding and then nothing. So that's pretty much it. To solve this challenge, I used both IDA Pro and Ghidra, mostly because I don't have the hex race decompiler. So if I want to look at some kind of C-level code, then I will use Ghidra. But with assembly, I still kind of prefer IDA. Okay, let's open the binary up. It is actually a very short code, so it's not going to take forever to reverse it. If we go to start, and I will open it in Gitra as well, just to have it here. All right, the animations are great. They certainly did some work on it. Here we can see the call to the message box. We want to find out what happens before that. A few instructions above, there is a call to another function. Let's first identify what arguments are passed to this function. I already renamed some of the parameters when I solved this challenge. I call this interest string because I have a terrible sense of humor, but no, because this looks like a long string hardcoded in the binary, which is interesting. All right, you might or might not know that in x86 32-bit assembly, the function parameters are passed on the stack in reverse order. So the last parameter that is pushed onto the stack is the first parameter of the function. So this function will get three parameters, the text that we see in the message box, the interest string, and the number ox1c. First, let's just quickly go through the binary to get an idea of what could be happening here. Here you can see there is some kind of loop because we are looping through these blocks. Here's another function call and then that gets this string and this text. My assumption at the beginning was that this text was just a text which we are just generating in runtime for the message box. So at the beginning it's empty and we are filling it up character by character. You could check it in the debugger and see that that's really how it works. Now let's look at the code in Ghidra as well to see whether the decompiled code confirms our assumption. This first function call, this is our text. I didn't rename it here, but this is the interest string and this is the number. Let's follow the function call. It's pretty clear that we have a while loop here, which reads through something and we can actually recognize now that the ox1c is the counter in this loop. So basically we are running this loop ox1c times, which is 28 in decimal, so we go through these loops 28 times. You probably suspected already that the generated string will be 28 characters long. We call this other function with the string and the text. But if you look below, we see that we add the return value of the function to the interest string and increment the p-text uh, as well. That probably means that in this context p-text, which is a pointer to the text, is not used as a string but as a character and we are going through the text character by character. So this function iterates through 28 characters. We'll have to understand what this other function does however. So let's look at it. We can see that we do something interesting. We do some calculations, we compare it to something and then we do some kind of back magic. At this point it's still pretty confusing but our current goal was to get a general idea about what goes on in this binary. Let's go back to IDA as well just to see the structure of the code. As you can see we do some comparisons and depending on that we do different calculations. Actually to solve the challenge we don't really have to figure out what exactly is happening here. Next, to get more information on what exactly is happening in the binary we can run it in a debugger. I will start x32dbg and open our binary. Let's see what would be an interesting place to look at. I think after this calculation, which is at 
OX401151. So let's jump to the entry point and then go to expression. The full address, the full addresses are different in IDA and in the debugger, uh, but only because it's loaded to a different base address. So you could synchronize it, uh, but I will just use the offset, not the full addresses. So, so let's jump to the same offset, which is the OX1151. So this is the code we see in IDA. So at the end of this calculation, I will put a breakpoint and go back to the beginning of the program. All right, what I want to see in memory is how the text variable changes as we iterate through the loop. In this line, in this line, the address will be loaded. So whenever we get to the load effective address, I will just load the address in the dump so that we can you know, visually follow what's happening. I will step through to that instruction. Here I load the text into EEX. So EEX is the address of that text memory. So I will click follow in dump and you can see that it's empty at this point, which is expected. All right, now I will run the program and we stopped at the end of the calculations function where we had the breakpoint. We can see that we filled the first character in the text with an I. And we can now keep executing the program. And as you can see, it's slowly filling up the text with the string, I never broke the encoding. So this shows that our assumption was correct. This text variable is basically the output that we will see in the message box. The calculation does some kind of magic on each character and then copy it into the resulting text. So probably the hard-coded string that I called interest string is an encoded version of this text that we see in the message box. At this point, I was wondering what we could do here. The program doesn't take any input, so we cannot really influence it from the outside. Um, this means that we probably need to alter the program some way uh, to do something else that would recover the flag for us. I thought about changing these, these values or maybe taking out the comparisons, but that all seemed kind of random because how would we know what values should we choose and the, what comparisons we should take out? So there was no you know, real uh, purpose in that. And also this was the second challenge of Flareon, so it shouldn't be super difficult yet. So as I was wondering about these, and at some point I had the idea to read the description again. The description, if you remember, it mentions something being overly long. And that is when I realized that it was interesting that we had this fixed value in the code, the OX1C or 28, which basically defines how long our loop is going to go. We are just looking at these 28 characters of this string and that's when I realized that I should look into how long the string actually is in the binary. If we go there where the string is located, we can scroll down and start counting, but it's going to be clear really quickly that it's longer than 28 characters. So it ends at the address OX20B7 and it starts at OX2008. So if we do the math, OX20B7 minus 2008 is OXAF and that's 127 in decimal. So the hardcoded string is 127 characters long, but we only decode the first 28 characters of it. So probably the solution is to decode the whole string and then you know see what happens. So that's what we are going to do and we are going to do that in the debugger because with the debugger we can influence it in runtime. It seems fairly easy, so I will just restart this application and I will also turn off my breakpoint. Let's go back to the CPU window and the jump to the beginning. This is the OX1C that sets the loop counter. So let's step over it to push it onto the stack. 
Once it's on the stack, I will just come here and click uh, modify and change it to AF, which was the 175 and say, okay. So basically with that, we said that instead of the 28 loop, we want to do 175 iterations in the loop. And then I will just run it and see what happens. Here is the pop-up and awesome. This is great. We got the flag. As we suspected, the flag was there in the hardcoded string the whole time, but the application by default only decodes the first part, the first 28 characters. But when we set it to decode the whole 175 characters, then we got the flag. All right, so this was pretty much it. So thanks for watching. And probably this is the last video before the holidays. So enjoy your holidays. And if you like my videos, then subscribe to the channel. Thanks and happy hacking.